Good morning, and welcome to St. Mark's on this the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. Our color continues to be green, celebrating new life and all of creation among us. Please note the ministries, the events, the activities that are listed for you in our bulletin to remind you that we only have about two weeks before our July 4th celebration and the um, activities for which to volunteer are noted for you in the back of our narthex. If you can help in any way in the celebration, I know it would be very much appreciated. Also, please keep in your prayers today, Jane Klein. Jane is a patient at EPMC, uh, following and some time in the ER, hopefully that everything is taken care of. She uh, says that uh, she wants to be with you today, but obviously can't, and extends her best and hopes you will remember. You will remember her in your prayers. Do we have other announcements that we would like to share with one? If not, I would invite you to please stand as you are able that we might begin with our brief order for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Seeking God's abundance, we confess our sin. God our provider, help us. It is hard to believe that there is enough to share. We question your ways, but they differ from our ways. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your love. Turn us again to you. Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us with life.
You preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength, pilot us. By your power, preserve us. By your wisdom, instruct us. And by your hand, protect us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. says, 
at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry, but as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Funny thing about Jim and this song, 
Whenever he would sing it, he would do so from the back of the nave, never facing the grieving family. I asked him why he did that, and he said, well, because I can't face the grieving family. Seeing their faces as I sing can make me doubt my own faith and the assurance that I'm trying to give. Our gospel for today is the story of Jesus and his disciples crossing the Sea of Galilee at night in a storm. Waves lap against their boat. Great wind tosses the vessel to and fro. So great is this storm that professional fishermen, sometimes we forget the profession of most of the first disciples were fishermen, that these professional fishermen were fearful for their lives. No doubt they had experienced storms before, but we get the impression never quite like this. In their panic, they turn to wake their master, Jesus, who the evangelist Mark informs us is asleep on a cushion. They wake him and they ask in fear, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Jesus rises, says to the wind and the waves, Peace, be still, and immediately there is a dead Jesus asks, why were you afraid? Have you still no faith? The disciples filled with great awe asked themselves, who is this that even wind and sea obey him? The story is filled with metaphor, all meant to proclaim to us the identity of Jesus and to convince us that Jesus does indeed care. Care about us in all kinds of ways. Consider the detail of the story. Evening comes and Jesus says, let's cross over to the other side. Why? What's on the other side? And why do it at night when you can't see? And danger increases. Well, the answer, according to Mark, is to do battle with evil on evil's terms. Darkness was, is, symbolic of wickedness. So crossing at night is to illustrate that with Jesus on the scene, there is no home field advantage for evil, for darkness. And so, as people of God who follow Jesus, whenever we encounter evil, darkness, and hate, to throw up our hands and to say, well, you know, that's just the way things are, and we have to take things that way, or else nothing gets done, is unacceptable. Because with Jesus with us, evil does not have a chance. Another detail of the story, storms, wind, Rain and water in general symbolized chaos in Judaism. In the creation story, when the Spirit of God hovers over water, it is to communicate that God is bringing order out of chaos. This is referenced in our reading today from Job. Same thing happens in this story. Peace, says Jesus and there is a dead calm. The detail of the boat. Most of us are familiar that the boat is symbolic of the church. As I have on many occasions, I remind you of our church building, the hull of the ship, the bow of the balcony. It reminds us that we will be tossed on the waves of evil, uncertainty, darkness, and tragedy, but Jesus is in the boat. Jesus is in the boat with us, and that illustrates victory. Jesus will triumph. Jesus will see us through. The question that is asked by the disciples to Jesus, do you not care? Followed by the action 
action and answer of Jesus communicates that it's okay to question. It's okay to wonder if God cares because ultimately the answer is always yes. Remember Martin Luther's definition of faith? Simple trust in the promises of Finally, the question, who then is this, is meant to be rhetorical. Then disciples know, else they would not have awakened him. They, they know who Jesus is. All who look to Jesus know who he is. All who may know who to Jesus, look to Jesus will know who he is, what he brings. The story, as well as Jim's singing, is to communicate faith. Faith as trust in who Jesus is and what Jesus brings to us. Jesus is the one who brings calm out of chaos, who brings love, goodness out of evil, who brings justice out of injustice, who brings hope out of tragedy. Jesus brings peace, divine peace, a peace that can and often is present even in the act of human war. Jesus is the one who gets into the boat with us. Jesus is the one who gets into life with us. Jesus is the one who is in this church with us. After all, what's that name that he is known by? Emmanuel, God with us. To borrow a phrase from Madison Avenue, it's not just for Christmas. Never was. The story also proclaims what Jesus does not bring. Jesus does not bring escape. He does not bring vacation from life and life's problems. He isn't the one we can turn to where we don't have any problems if we have any faith. Jesus does not bring wrath. Evil, sin, and death have been defeated. It's a done deal. How can anyone, knowing that Jesus brings resurrection and new life from death, ever accuse Jesus of bringing wrath? Misery only comes when we refuse to acknowledge the victory. When we seek to keep hate and vengeance and narcissism alive through such practices as Christian nationalism and egocentrism, where we believe that our ways are so much better than God's. Jesus is not the new lawgiver who gives us a new set of instructions. Rather, Jesus fulfills the law by and in love. Does Jesus care? Does he care that nations treat each other as commodities rather than human beings? Does he care when leaders of nations seek to keep fighting wars only so they can stay in power? Does Jesus care when his followers do not seek to be representative of him and seek ways of justice with peace? Does he care when we feel overwhelmed by disease and tragedy and the ways of the world? In the language of the song, oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. For God's word reminds us of this care. Seek to have conversation with Jesus, who is in the boat with you, with me, with all of us. Disturb him. He will welcome it. And so will you.
only Son of our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and the born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Equip your faithful people to approach this world with a sense of wonder. Make your church a safe place to explore big questions, troubling doubts, and honest laments. Humble our hearts to repent of the ways that communities of faith have inflicted pain or trauma. Merciful God, you spoke creation into order from the chaos of the swirling deep. May your name be praised by rivers and seas, wetlands and waterfalls. Secure clean water for all people and protect water sources from contamination or exploitation. Merciful God, amid whirlwinds of division, violence, and conflict, remind us again that you are as steadfast as the foundations of the earth. Rejuvenate peacemakers, advocates, and community organizers when they feel weary in their work, especially in Israel, Gaza, and Ukraine. Merciful God, deliver your people from their distress, God. We look before you all who are sick or struggling, especially Liz, Grace, Vanessa, Gary, Charles, Jerry, Richard, Ashley, Lucille, April, Gary, Elsie, Virginia, Bunny, Judy, Deb, Ezra, Sheila, Kevin, Kathy, Micah, Linda, Richard, Evelyn, Walt, Kristen, Yvonne and Jerry, Ariel, John, Joe, Bob, Carl, Jane. Merciful God, enfold all travelers with your protection. Bless the comings and goings of this assembly as we travel for leisure or for let all journeys be met with hospitality on the way, and let community members return to us with celebration. Merciful God, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation for all the redeemed of the Lord. Join together with the great cloud of witnesses, we give thanks for your steadfast love and your wonderful works. Merciful God, receive our prayers, O God, come quickly to our aid, through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you.
And so with the church on the earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join in our ending hymn.
Christ, strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table no more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen.